All right, this is Motor Calculations Electrical Exam for my community college class, ELT 242. This is steps three and four. These are real easy. Hopefully you've watched steps one and two. This is a six step process. So there's this, these are fairly easy. Uh, it shouldn't take long to learn this one at all. Obviously get out your code book. We got some highlighting to do. Uh, and few, I think two tables, maybe three tables to look at in this process here. Uh, the tables that will be covered today is on step three. is table 430.22 for single motors. And that's just like one motor. You got your branch circuit, you got your starter, overloads, and a motor. Step four is breaker sizing for that branch circuit, table 430.52. Obviously, we got to protect it, protect the wire. We turn the starter on, and the overloads protect the motor. Five and six will cover multiple motors, so this is for single motors. So if we got one motor, we're going to size the wiring for it. All right, step three. All we got to do on this one is add 25% to our full load current. That's it. It says find your branch circuit wiring opacity, and that's what we're doing. Conductors that supply a single motor used in a continuous duty application shall have an opacity of not less than 125% of its full load current rating. So basically, we add 25% to the full load current. That's all you gotta do. So you find step one, find your full load current, multiply it by 1.25, and there you got your wire opacity. Some questions will ask you what size wire do you need? So you have to take it one step further. Hopefully if you watched the opacity video and you know, you know what chart to do or go to, 310, 16. You know what size type insulation. So let's say the opacity is 43 amps we, and it's THHN wire. We need to go to that chart and determine what how many, what size wire do we need? But the question, that's the two type questions on step three. It's going to ask you the ampacity that you need or your wire size for the branch circuit. That's it on step three. So let's go to your code book and do these sample questions. If you want to stop the video right now, you can and answer these four and then turn it back on and we're going to go on to the next slide and answer them. Okay, here's step three answers. Wiring in pass required for branch circuit, single phase, five horse, 220 volt. As you can see, what we did, we found the full load current for every one of these questions and added 125% to it, or 1.25. That's the best way to do it. 28 times 1.25, and we got our amperage. The first two questions there are asking for amperage. The last two are asking for wire size. So you got to take it that step further. We found our ampacity. Uh, on this third question, what size wire is needed? The full load current was 13.8. We multiplied 1.25 to it and got 17.25 amps. What wire that has TW insulation can handle 17.25 amps? Well, obviously, a number 12 carries 20 amps. So therefore, we're going to use a number 12. We've got to go over that amount because we've got to handle that amount of ampacity. Step three is easy. That's all it is to it. Okay, step four. What size branch circuit do we need? What size branch circuit breaker do we need? you got different fuses. you got different types of breakers. Instantaneous breakers that you know, trip on instant. Inverse time. The higher the amperage, the quicker it trips. You know, it's got a little delayed dual element fuses. You really don't want a breaker to trip instantaneously because when the motor starts up, obviously it's going to pull a lot of amps. So you want to kind of have that delay in there. <clears throat> but 43052 gives the multipliers for the different style breakers. So what we do on step four, we find the full load current. That's step one. And then we go to this table, 430.52, and 
and we find the multiplier and put that percentage in it and that gives us a wiring ampacity. So let's say it turns up to be 87 amps, full load current times the percentage multiplier. Well, there's not an 87 amp breaker. So we gotta go up to 90. You can't go down, you can go up a size on branch circuits, one size. So if the question says, you know, it's 87 amps is your answer that you get, and the multiple choice says 70, 80, 100, and 110, well, the next size up is 90. You can't go to 100 because you're gonna go the next size up. So you go down to 80. That's kind of a trick question, curveballs on those, but most of the time it will just ask you and you get your answer and the answer the next size up is there. But 240.6A is where you find your breaker sizes. And I've got a little chart down the road here, next slide or two, that tells you how to remember those. And they're real easy. And it says there at the bottom, if the answer is not a standard size breaker, you go up to the next available size. Here's table 43052, the chart. You see on the left side, you got your motors right here, single phase motors. So anything that's single phase motor, there's your multipliers. AC polyphase, polyphase will throw you. All that means is three phase. So if you get a question that says a three phase motor and it's other than a wound rotor, there's your chart. There's your column right there. Look, so what we need to do is find our top motor in the question, find what type of fuse or breaker we're using. Is it non-time delay? Is it dual element? Is it instantaneous or inverse time? That's our four options. And then we obviously we got options for different motors, but you find your multiplier, take your full load current, multiply these by one of these multipliers. Okay, here's table 240.6a. As you can see, my little rhyme or analogy, I get the best way of saying it, you go up by fives up to 50, you go up to on by tens up to 110. So 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. There's no 55. So once it hits 50, we start going up by 10. 10, so it's 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. So you know every breaker from 15 to 110 right now. Because you go up by 5 to 50, you go up to, by 10s to 110. Of course, you can go up by 25s up to 300 if you want to try to remember that. But the main ones I want y'all to remember, if y'all can learn these, and y'all can learn the others down the road if you need them. Sample questions here. Take these questions, see if you can answer them with your code book. Highlight what you need to highlight, and pause this video, answer these questions, and then come back and we'll see if we can answer them. Okay, we're back. A way to remember these breaker sizes Go up fives up to 50, 10 to 110, go to 25 up to 300. Easy way to remember them. Okay, here's your sample answers. For dual element fuses, we've got a single horsepower motor. So that's a single phase motor. That's, I'm sorry, you got branch circuit protection for a single phase five horse 220 volt motor. So it's a single phase motor. So we go five horse, 220 volt, it's 28 amps. We got a dual element fuse and a single motor, single phase motor, so it's 175%, it's 49 amps. Obviously there's not a 49 amp breaker, so we're gonna to go to 50 amps. Because 50 amp is a 50 amp fuse, there, there is such a thing. Here's the answers to the others, 100 amps. 25 amp breaker and a 450 amp breaker. Okay, questions I need y'all to turn into Moodle are right here. Answer these and see if you can turn them in. Right, you know, questions for steps three and four or answers to steps three and four video and turn them in on a piece of paper or not a piece of paper into Moodle. 
you know, my, I guess write, write them up on Microsoft Word and turn them in. Well, alrighty, I hope y'all have a good time. See y'all on the next video.